podemos até não saber, mas a inteligência artificial já faz parte do nosso cotidiano. Das ações mais simples às mais complexas, não é mais possível imaginar a vida sem essa tecnologia. Mas o que acontece quando levamos os robôs para casa e eles passam a fazer o papel de companheiros? Fascinada por robôs e disposta a investigar os sentimentos que nascem dessa nova realidade, a diretora alemã Isa Willinger fez de Olá e A uma experiência imersiva e sensorial. Para isso, ela acompanhou um solitário cientista americano que namora uma real doll e uma família japonesa que compra um novo amigo para a vó. Sobre o filme e sobre o futuro da inteligência artificial, Isa conversou conosco. Confira. I'm not definitely not a, a tech person like my sort of inspiration did not come from technology um I, I just read a you know some newspaper report about robots and and I thought oh robots are actually so cinematographic because it's so interesting to watch how they move and how they you know to to hear them talk and uh and I thought it would be so interesting to um collect these robots that are already in the world there aren't that many yet um humanoid robots into one film and and you know and i, I just i had in mind more like surrealist art you know uh, to me it was more like a i had a very surrealistic atmosphere in mind and it was su supposed to explore more our yeah i guess the audience feelings you know as we are watching these bizarre creatures of our future world and and so you know let us explore our feelings vis-à-vis uh, -vis these grotesque creatures. So that was a very initial idea, actually. The film is kind of creepy, you know, like I felt kind of, kind of fear, you know, like thinking about the future. It's also interesting, like optimistic, because robots can help people. Like they mm -hmm. already do this right. In, right. A, in, a, in a private point of view. How did you choose the private life for this film? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was then the filmmaker and me coming into it. Um, like at first, you know, the visual artist was there sort of discovering these amazing looking creatures. And then, you know, the storyteller came and said, okay, but how can we, you know, actually tell a story and how can, you know, we, we, we have the, the audience connect emotionally. And that was, of course, much easier through um, sort of emotional uh, storytelling, you know. And so I became aware quite fast that I would have to find robots that are actually already in people's houses in order to find more complex relationships that would be more interesting to tell a story about. And how did you convince your characters to open their houses to you? Oh, was it easy or difficult? Um, yeah, it wasn't so hard. It just took some time to find people because um, there isn't many robots at all that are capable to live in a private house you know robots are still so uh, vulnerable they break down all the time so um, even in Japan um, this particular robot pepper that is in the film it was sold to to private uh, households uh, only like 1,000 times it's usually and um, the, the the other main protagonist Chuck um, who's the American who lives uh, in a love relationship with a robot um, that was also a process um, I you know I had there I put up an ad in a forum where people were interested in uh, those kinds of things and I got a couple of replies but most people got sort of frightened um, the more they found out you know what it would entail to be really filmed for a couple of days and so on and they thought you know they might lose their job maybe if you know their employer might happen to see the movie And, um, and I had a very good connection to Chuck right away when we talked on the phone. And um, yeah, we kept on talking on the phone for like a year before we could actually shoot. That was a long process of getting to know each other and sort of building up a relationship of trust. Are they still together, Chuck and Harmony? Um, not really, no. He, in the end, no. He decided that you know, he'd rather try for a real person again. I, I think... I think that's something you wanted to tell us, which is a story with no stereotypes. Because every time we think about a man or a woman, any, any person who has a real doll, is someone who's lonely, who doesn't know how to, you know, relate to people, have a proper relationship or something like this. But at the end of the day, we see he's just a guy. You know what I mean? Mm, that's right. I think that... Um... I mean, I, I talked to a couple of other guys, like I said, um, 
and they all seemed it all seemed like they were more complex than the stereotype you have i mean the stereotype is like oh my god it's a, such a creepy maybe perverted thing even but then when you when you really start to to talk to these people you understand um that you know they're very lonely and that is a very you know human uh, there's a very human experience of loneliness uh, behind this desire to try this out but also you you give us you make us some questions about the future and consciousness like values mm -hmm. human values like uh, how this came in the process like is something mm -hmm. that you had in mind already or you discovered it making the film yeah, I discovered it. I mean, the, the more I read about AI, the more um, I was drawn into the ph philosophical questions. There's just so many super deep questions uh, connected to it. You know, what it means to be human, where is the borderline between, you know, the brain and a computer. And, and I really wanted to get some of these questions into the film. You know, then I started uh, listening to this podcast and I, and I, and I understood that I could use you know, po the podcast as well for the film. Um, so yeah, so this, the questions are very important to me. Talking about the podcast, it's really, it's really interesting that you, the only informative like content mm -hmm. of your film, it's through the podcast. So we don't see the people, like yeah. more robotic than the robots. I didn't want a mediator in between, be it a journalist, be it a, you know, professor, a scientist who would sort of, you know, explain everything and put everything into order. Um, I really wanted um, to create some sort of shock moment, I think, for the audience. And, uh, and the podcast was very good because it, did, it does give us some information and does raise questions explicitly, but it also stays uncanny and ghostly in a way because yeah like you said we never see the people do you think we are already changing the way we relate because of the machines like cell phones you know computers tv everything mm -hmm. yeah i think a little bit we probably have changed a bit i think um definitely an attention span has changed you know um I think, yeah, to a lot of people, um, human to human, like face to face contact is not as important anymore since we're using, you know, a lot of devices to, to, to create contact. Uh, I think, yeah, slowly a little bit has changed. I don't think our ethics have been compromised. How do you see this, the medicine part of the robot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually think that's the most promising part as far as the humanoid robots go. Um, I think, um, I mean, the better the robots actually become the humanoid robots and the more human-like they become, the more dangerous it really is that we can start confusing them with humans. And then, you know, there's, you know, the, the, the potential of a huge mess in our psychology. And so I think in science, in, 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 in medicine, yeah, to help people that have, you know, issues or also in, in some cases, you know, in, uh, to, to help um, entertain um, older people that have you know that are really spending a lot of time on their own what is the most important thing you found out making the film I think the most important thing is that I found out is that I yeah to to stay open and not to be so judgmental I think um, I also had you know my prejudices when I came into this topic um, started researching and um, and I realized that it's it's very important to yeah to to be open and to I mean it's very easy for us to say that's that's creepy I would never want that that's just gonna you know when an older woman has a robot at home that's just gonna be the end of you know civilization pretty much um, to be so pessimistic you know my grandmother for example she watches television like seven hours a day you know and isn't you know if, if she had a robot for like you know and she could chat with a robot for two hours a, a day instead of watching television or play cards so i think you know we really have to be open to to new possibilities and 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 but also of course be aware of all the risks definitely how do you think cinema can help us to discuss this? In this case, um, we can really observe something. It's something very visual and sensual, you know, to observe these robots and the humans interacting. And, and, and I think um, cinema and the movie camera provides us with a, with a very good sort of window into the future in a way, you know, where we can experience something that we don't have in our own surrounding yet. 
so I think there's a lot of sort of sensual experience like stuff involved that only cinema can provide um, that is very very nice to explore super happy and excited that this film is playing in Brazil and that you know you the Brazilian audience are watching my film I'm very honored thanks Isa essa foi Isa Willinger conversando com a gente sobre o futuro e sobre inteligência artificial. Fique com a gente da Mostra Eco Falante 2020. Ainda tem muito mais filme e muito mais conversas como essa.